This is Tara Carr from the University of Arizona presenting endotypes and phenotypes in asthma. The term phenotype is defined as an observable characteristic of a disease in an individual. This can include morphology, development, or other physical properties. For example, allergic asthma is one type of asthma phenotype. An endotype is a specific biologic mechanism that causes an observed property of any given phenotype. So for example, a patient with allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis has a severe reaction to molds that causes their allergic type of asthma. Patients who have type 2 or non-type 2 asthma are characterized by this phenotype. Other ways that we phenotype include eosinophilic or non-eosinophilic asthma, allergic or non-allergic, obstructed versus not obstructed, early versus late onset, and steroid responsive or non-responsive. We use biomarkers, which are identifiable characteristics, to try to determine a patient's phenotype and to work towards understanding an endotype. Eosinophils are blood cells that are characteristic of type 2 inflammation, and increased eosinophils in the airway and the blood are present in approximately half of patients with asthma. Eosinophils can contribute to the pathogenesis of asthma, and high eosinophil counts are related to frequent exacerbations and may identify patients with more severe disease. In general, identifying more than 300 eosinophils in the blood is very specific for patients who have eosinophils in the airway, and fewer than 150 eosinophils in the blood are unlikely to have eosinophils in the airway. IgE is the allergic antibody, which is very specific for allergic asthma. Patients who have allergic asthma may have asthma that's been persistently allergic since childhood, or new onset allergic asthma, particularly as related to occupational exposures or other environmental exposures. For these patients, inhalation of a specific allergen will cause their typical asthma symptoms to develop. Allergic asthma is mediated by specific IgE antibodies, and so often we can find specific IgEs either through skin testing or blood testing for things like dust mites, pet dander, cockroaches, and pollens like trees and grasses. Molds are particularly important for patients with asthma and can contribute to asthma severity and disease. Nitric oxide is a chemical that's released by the lungs and is a marker of IL-13 mediated inflammation. Nitric oxide can be a good marker of patients who would benefit from more corticosteroid use and can identify patients who are at risk of exacerbation. Nitric oxide is affected by age, smoking, and diet, and so needs to be interpreted carefully, but can be tested as a point of care test in the clinic. Sputum eosinophils are a specific way to identify airway eosinophilia, but many clinicians do not have access to sputum eosinophil testing as a test for their patients. When identifying an asthma phenotype or endotype, assessment of specific IgE, blood eosinophil counts, and exhaled nitric oxide levels can be helpful for driving further therapies, including biologics and other interventions. For example, if you can identify clinically relevant allergen-specific IgE through total IgE levels or specific IgE levels and supported by exhaled nitric oxide levels, then patients may have allergic asthma or meet criteria for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Patients don't have clinically relevant allergy, but they still have blood eosinophils greater than 100 to 300, then they may have eosinophilic asthma that would benefit from treatment with specific IL-5 blockers. Patients who don't have evidence of type 2 asthma through IgE, exhaled nitric oxide, or eosinophils may have non-type 2 asthma and so benefit from other therapies.